Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the LLS Kitchen, where we take you for a tour of our wineries, but we will not go into the cellar. We will go into their kitchen, and our winemakers and owners will remove their wine hat, and they will wear a chef one. Our producer will show us how to prepare one of the favorite dishes and match it with one of their wines. Uh, after the live feed is over, of course, you can visit the Facebook page, uh, my Facebook page, for example, and to watch the video again. And you can retrieve a uh, recipe card with instructions so that you can make that dish at home. Uh, we also will provide some retail suggestions so you can go and buy the wine if you so choose. We are going to start this episode in true Italian fashion this time with an aperitivo. In Italy, we start every meal with a drink shared among our friends and family. And usually we go and do it in our neighbor bar. So before lunch or dinner, we go and have a little drink. Uh, and um, depends where you are in uh, the country, you will have a different drink. This time we're going to do a little spritz. Here, there is a clip that the staff in Nardini recorded for us in their experimental bar called Garage Nardini. They will show us how to make us a perfect spritz. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to Garage Nardini. My name is uh, Massimo Tonini. Uh, I'm the managing director with Distillery Nardini and I'm here uh, today with uh, Nicola, Nick uh, Scatola. He is the resident uh, bartender with Garage Nardini. We are going to drive you uh, through this journey with LLS Kitchen. Thank you Winebo for hosting us. Uh, we'll be showcasing some of the most iconic recipes uh, of this uh, uh, beautiful bar with all the expertise uh, of Nick. I've been told we are experiencing one of the most uh, popular cocktails uh, in Italy and worldwide, I would say nowadays, which is the spritz. So what is spritz standing for? Spritz born like the concept uh, to matching uh, white wine and uh, sparkling water. But during the years, the concept changed. Okay, and uh, for example, now we put uh, a little bit of liquor uh, and plus uh, respect the, the basic uh, ingredient. We use our uh, liquor aperitif, is bitter nardini, to create a very good sparkling uh, cocktail. What is a bitter nardini like? What what is the flavor? The f Why the, is this the perfect match? For is the perfect kids? match because the the taste of the, the bitter nardini is uh, citrus. Okay, the citrus note that is more important in this liquor is the orange, and for this reason, is very good uh, liquor aperitif to create a spritz yeah. with a rhubarb root. Okay, and we have a um, bitter note with the gentian root and absit and uh, to end a uh, citrus, no citrus note with an uh, orange peel. What are the do's and don'ts for a spritz? I mean, something that you need to know and do and something that you have to avoid. So what is the first ingredient to start for a spritz? The first ingredient to start for a spritz is uh, ice. To start, uh, if you want to decide to have um, two different glass, the, uh, the classic glass is a tumbler, or if you want a more elegant glass, you can use the tulip. It's more simple. Can we have them both? Yes. But the proportion is one versus two. Yes. So one bitter, two prosecco. Yes. And, prosecco. And two ounces. How would you describe uh, uh, bitter nardini compared to other, let's say, uh, options uh, in the market, meaning uh, color-wise and profile-wise? I think it's a perfect uh, uh, spritz uh, bitter because it's yes. soft, it's not too bitter, not too extreme. Not too spicy, it's more, uh, the taste is more gentle mm -hmm. and it's more indicated to have a matching with a prosecco. We use a splash of soda. To finish, a slice of orange. Oh, lovely. Let's say a couple of words on this. Experiences in Nardini, uh, uh, bitter, uh, gave me a new perspective on, on spritz because it's very, very well balanced, round uh, and not too extreme, so smooth enough to have a perfect aperitif. So, let's toast. I'm, I'm the old school guy. Yes. <laughs> lovely. Thank you. Cheers. And cheers. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Joy, salute. Lovely. 
Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was great. Thank you, our friends in Nardini, uh, for this great uh, interpretation of uh, the spritz. So we go back to our episode, and as we did in the last one, we will we have picked a uh, a theme to discuss or that connects uh, our recipe to uh, um, what we're doing today. And the theme is tradition. Our little trip today will take us to Franciacorta, on the edge of the Lake di Zeo in Lombardia. We will visit Barone Pizzini. Franciacorta is a little nature oasis nestled in the middle of a very industrial area. We are in the province of Brescia within the Lombardia region. And we are surrounded by factories that produce a variety of products from industrial machineries to weapons, to furniture and clothing. But when you get to the, uh, the area of near the Monte Orfano, the scenery changes dramatically and the industrial buildings are replaced by vineyards and wineries. It's here that Barone Pizzini established its winery and became a trailblazer in many and many endeavors. From establishing the first golf course where female golfers were allowed in 1927, to introducing an environmentally concerned way to tend to the vineyards in an early 80s. They were the first one to introduce actually organic growing in Franciacorta. And today we will talk to the soul of this movement, Silvano Brescianini, whose pioneeristic views have brought him to become the president of the Franciacorta Consortio. He is one of the owners of Barone Pizzini and an excellent gourmand, given his restaurant background. He will be preparing a typical dish from the Lake di Zeo and will match with Barone Pizzini Animante. Welcome, Silvano. How are you today? Franciacorta, a very well used Salvatore. Very good. So I'm going to just get to the, uh, tell us a little bit about you and about your winery, please. Okay, we are in Franciacorta, north of Italy, in Lombardia. Uh, Franciacorta is between Milano and Verona, just to give you an idea, close to the lake of Iseo. Barone Pizzini, another family who arrived in Franciacorta a couple of centuries ago and started to produce wine in the vineyard close to the river. And today, the Barone Pizzini is a winery who produces uh, 25 cases of uh, Franciacorta. And uh, everything is organic. So, uh, about Franciacorta. Franciacorta is the name of the region and the name also of the tomato of the wine produced with the secondary fermentation in bottle. Okay. Uh, in this small part of uh, area in, in Brescia, and uh, the grape variety are. Uh, Moini Chardonnay, Pinot Noir 50%, Pinot Bianco less than 5 and uh, for the future we are just uh, working on an old variety called Elba Mart. We'll be released uh, soon. Barone Pizzini was the partner of organic farming in Franciacorta. We started in 1998 and uh, since 2001 all our uh, 54 hectares are uh, certificate or organic by European law and also biodiversity friendly because organic was the first step but uh, later we also work in a, in a biodiversity approach so in order to keep uh, more life as possible into the vineyard in order to use uh, less uh, um, work, less pesticide as well but uh, everything organic but balance of the life. Barone Pizzini style is a Franciacorta uh, with a complex, with the freshness and the brightness from our different vineyard. So, if uh, you never visit Franciacorta, uh, as I tell you, it's, if you're on the road in Verona to Milano, it can be interesting to stop in uh, Lago di Zeo because it is a very small, not so pretty, and of course, this is also our uh, building, our winery, who is a sustainable building because we build in order to save energy. So, we use a solar panel, we control the water, we save energy, and everything is in focus of uh, organic approach uh, to, to be green as possible. That's our approach uh, in the vineyard while doing the work. and. We hope we can find the grass also this approach. Okay. 
Professor Sorry, I was having some, some difficulty because I couldn't unmute myself. So I'm going to just get to the, uh, again, I know we have only half an hour and uh, you have some things to cook for us. What are you going to cook for us today? Uh, I want to prepare you a dish uh, which is very simple but very, very connected with our make. Uh, it will be a pasta, a spaghetti tonight, uh, with uh, sardine. Uh, you know, the lake is small and uh, we have uh, fishermen who keep uh, uh, all today the old tradition. Uh, sardine from Lago di Zeo is not the sardine you can find in, uh, in the sea. Uh, the correct name are Agoni, but uh, because they're very similar to uh, sardine, we call it sardine. And, uh, uh, Centuries ago, uh, before the, the fridge, before the cotton temperature, uh, the salt was very expensive, and uh, our fishermen find a way to uh, preserve the preserve this fish using less salt, uh, and they used to dry under under the sun, under the wind. That's why something very very typical. But uh, uh, this uh, fish is also very tasty. So in order to balance the, the flavor, we will use a few quantity with pasta, uh, olive oil from La Rizzeo, of course organic as well, and some garlic or pepper to, to finish, and a zest of lemon. Let's get to prepare. prepare. Let's see how we do it. You can start. Yes, please. I want to see with your uh, chef. Oh, nice. Okay. You're going to have to send some of those to the United States. <laughs> okay. So, and that's really interesting. Sardine, spaghetti with uh, organic whole grain, lemon, garlic, and all the oliva from Lago uh, Okay, let's go. Because it's very simple, we can. Uh, uh, put the spaghetti already and start to prepare the sauce. Like a true Italian, always tasting everything you cook. I like it. You know, produce wine is a, a busy job, and often I don't know what time I will finish, and it's a it happens to arrive later at home and uh, we need to prepare something tasty and uh, natural as well, but quickly. Okay. So the spaghetti are on water. We prepare the garlic. That's fresh garlic. Fresh garlic, of course, organic. You've been a pioneer in the organic world uh, in the area of Franciacorta. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, it, it, because I, I, I came from, I born in a restaurant, the restaurant business also used to be a sommelier. And uh, when I started to produce wine, it was for me so strange, uh, difficult to understand why we should use poison to spray pesticide and herbicide to farm uh, to produce grape. It really doesn't make much sense. Uh, and that's why I asked uh, around uh, to understand to some other producer and friend uh, the way to, to have a more uh, green approach of working organic. At that time, 20 years ago, nobody produced organic in Jakarta. That's why, as always is, the beginning was difficult. But later I finally found a friend around me, to read it on, and also a great friend of mine. And uh, we began, and uh, you know, the, the first year was difficult. We need to find out the best way to do. But uh, if you look at today, Today there is almost uh, more than 60% of vineyard in Franciacorta are organic. So 
the, the beginning was difficult, but uh, we show it was possible and it makes sense. And to, I'm so proud to say today, many other friends, many other producers, move around 70% of the chocolate is working organic, and this is good for uh, for the wine, this is good for the soil, this is good for the planet. Awesome. So, what are you doing now? Now we prepare the sardine. So another way to take the sardine is with the polenta. No, not the fittery polenta is always a really classic, uh, but because normally for all people it was extremely expensive and tasty. For a family, one sardine, <laughs> so a small piece of uh, fish, and another polenta. <laughs> They are more active. You can enjoy more. And those are fish right on the in the lago di Seo? Yes, yes. I bought uh, the the wreck from the fisherman. Awesome. So it's, it's hard to say uh, how many uh, because these are the medium size and we use two for four people. Okay, half kilo pasta and uh, two sardine because it's medium size. And this will be given for tomorrow. And uh, it's not necessary to, to clean too much because we will use also the bones. And you're cutting it with the bones in it. Yes, but we don't need to fry it. I put some water because. It has to warm up the oil. And you use some of the water from the pasta because it's nice and starchy and salted as well. Correct. And those are smoked or salt dried? How are those uh, sardines cured? Well, uh, sardines are salty and tasty, uh, but not too much because, as I told you before, in order that this is this style to conserve the fish, was born just uh, to use less salt as possible in order to. to to save money because salt was extremely expensive and of course we don't have salt in bait. We have nothing put here, we know what we have the seeds. Yeah. So you got water, olive oil, garlic, and the sardines. Am I correct so far in the, in the pot? Correct. You know that it, Italian food is normally so simple and, uh, and pure. You can uh, extract the finger, finger the, the, the taste. So we use some uh, best of lemon, of course, organic lemon, to refresh. Okay? okay we move up the pasta to have better fire. And we prepare some. Uh, Basilico, basil. So if we use also parsley uh, or basilico, but you know, we are in summer and the season for the, the flavor of basil right now is uh, the best. And it doesn't make sense to use something different. You must have been a very, very um clean chef, you know, everything is <laughs> nice and neat, you clean after yourself, and every day everything is put away. You know, I love it. You know, so after 30 years ago, when I was uh, young and uh, with uh, <laughs> less pounds, uh, I used to work as a restaurant, and uh, I was part of the team uh, in San, when uh, San Domenico restaurant, uh, when I came to the in May, opened in, uh, in, uh, in New York City, in Manhattan. Yeah. Where well, now there is a, a beautiful place in Lobos called Maya, Chef Michael White. Yeah. A 
And of course, there's also the pasta. If, uh, it's important. Uh, the pasta I buy, I buy from a cooperative called Iris, here south of uh, Brescia, uh, close to Mantua. And uh, uh, this is a, a cooperative who produces only organic pasta, tomatoes, and vegetables. And the pasta uh, uh, makes sense. And the best pasta organic in order to have all the 80 uh, nutrients from, uh, from the grano, from the pasta, is better mm -hmm. if it's not uh, white pasta, but wool green. It's really so, better. So while you are, the water is, uh, is getting cooked, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what do you intend to drink with this uh, wonderful dish you're preparing? <laughs> you know, it's easy for a producer to have a bottle of wine <laughs> ready in temperature with the perfect glass. <laughs> and, uh, you know, during the day we are busy in the office, in the vineyard, meeting suppliers, talking with customers, but uh, I really, really love, and I always do, uh, enjoy a glass of uh, Franciacorta prepared the food. So you're drinking no. animante with your, uh, with your dish? Franciacorta animante, yes. Animante means animate life. We, we did this privately for the 15 years of organic, for, for our birthday of uh, 15 years of organic. So just like me, animated. That's what it means, right? Or animating. It's the life of the party, the wine. Isn't Correct. it? So look at the salsa, okay? It's just fish, oil, water. And the spaghetti is not ready. Take a bite to prepare some lemon bread. You know, the, I think so. we love to enjoy open from Chacorta, of course, because we are from Chacorta, but at the same time, bubble, uh, lower dosage, very fresh, good acidity. You can enjoy with pizza, with pasta, with fish. It's very easy to prepare. So you are the president of the consortium of the Franciacorta, am I correct? Yeah. Is that challenging? Yes, but my, my colleague, he votes for me last year. I'm a, I'm a president. We are 117 producer, And... Uh, during this time of COVID, we can do nothing, unfortunately, but uh, June, uh, the first week of June, we should be in uh, Manhattan for a tasting. And uh, right now, here, uh, we are moving out this nightmare of COVID. Restaurants are open, uh, we are free to go everywhere, and uh, business is good. And we are preparing the French Corta Festival in French Corta in September. It will be the second and the third weekend. All the money will be open for guests, for tasting, wine experience. Uh, for sure, we'll do many things in the vineyard. Uh, tour uh, or with horses, uh, uh, bike, motorbike, uh, yoga, everything. So, French Corta. I was reading some uh, statistics, uh, is consumed 92% in Italy, and more specifically in the area Lombardia. But things are changing across the world. So uh, are you willing to send more wine out there to the world for everybody to drink? Yes, of course. Uh, we will never be able to achieve a big number because the region is very uh, small, and we have the uh, lake in the north and the mountain, the mountain of the south, uh, the city of Brescia, the east, uh, and the river on the west. So we cannot achieve big number. Uh, last year we shipped uh, uh, almost 17 million bottles, not cases, bottles, and uh, maybe we can uh, do a little increase, a little bit, but not too much. 
but uh, we are so happy and proud to be a uh, um, partner of the Italian chef around the world as uh, we love to find a bottle of Francesca in, in Tokyo, in uh, San Francisco, or uh, Miami, or New York, or Chicago. With Italian food, and, but not only. Last year, I enjoyed an uh, outstanding oyster in, uh, in um, Boston. And of course, oyster of Francesca is always a great venue. Another good trait of a chef is to taste the pasta a couple of times. So it's nice and al dente. You never use the watch. <laughs> there we go. While Silvano um, prepares his dish, I just want to remind everybody that uh, you can watch this video again on uh, Facebook and there will be the addition of a little recipe card, as uh, you'll see it right now. Here it is, a little instructional reminder on how the dish is prepared, in case you miss some things because of the connection. And uh, you also will be able to find the places where you can purchase uh, Barone Pizzini Animante here. Most likely all foods will have things uh, like uh, the organic pasta, uh, as well as Mazzaro, Italian market will have things like the, the dry sardines, which I've seen in many markets as well. So those ingredients are not that difficult to find in the United States as well. Um, and I am getting hungry. Look at that. So it's now we are. I can smell it from here. Almost ready. So it's uh, no fire now, just uh, uh, fresh basil, pepper. The last drop of uh, organic olive oil from Lago Liceo. And we add gravy. Awesome. So we... What about the cost of putting the dish on the table with the penny? May I? Absolutely. Okay, let's go. Dorina, follow me. <laughs> yeah, right. Hello, fool. That's the name of the dog, isn't it? Okay, yes. Welcome in, uh, in my garden. Here is it. Ci vedi? No, è troppo vicino. Welcome in my garden, my wife Emanuela, Dorina, she's the, the, the operator camera. of the camera. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I wish I was there with you, Silvano. Hi, I is, uh, the flavor makes sense. And... Uh, <laughs> Glass of animante, of course. Did you see my dog so now? The big one? <laughs> Does he like the pasta meat? as well? No, only meat. <laughs> the name is Al Capone. Oh, wow. <laughs> the name is also a message. So uh, if you want to visit me at home, please ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> that looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> e voilà. Buon appetito. Grazie, grazie mille. Salute. Yes. No, Salute. Also, see you in Francia Corta and I host you in a wine di Barone Pizzini as soon as possible. All right, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you next week with another episode of LLS Kitchen where we go in uh, our producers' houses and uh, we try to eat with our family. It's going to be a little difficult given the distance, but at least we can uh, uh, vicariously live through their experience. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone. Ciao, Silvano. Ciao, ciao a tutti. Grazie. Ciao. ciao. Grazie Silvano. Come è andata? Good. Oh, Bye. Good.
<laughs> that was very good. Good. <laughs> that was great. Mezz'ora giusto. Half an hour precisely. Amazing. Perfect. Time. Half an hour sharp. That's good. That's uh, that's the uh, <laughs> precision. Northeast precision. Giusto. Giusto. So, e qui. Now it's perfect because it's fresh. Ci sono 25 gradi, c'è la rietta fresca. Oh, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's perfect. Awesome. Vado a vedermi. Posso rivedermi su Facebook? Certo, certo. E puoi fare un watch party ancora, tranquillamente. Puoi man far mandare al tuo gruppo praticamente il, uh, il video, senza problemi. Link. Lo mando subito. Okay. Oh. Va bene. Spero che sia andata bene, dai. Certo, certo, sei bravissimo. La prossima volta cucini di nuovo. Ah, beh, che abbiamo già mangiato a casa tua, eh. We already, I was lucky to actually have one of the typical grigliata that uh, Silvano prepared for us when we were here, we were there uh, for our Christmas uh, um... in January. Yes, it was in January, but our Christmas uh, dinner was in January this year. So, but it was good. It was great. It was great. And the next one is CCD. I hope so. Maybe Sardinia. We'll see. At least we can Sardinia. be isolated somehow. <laughs> For sure. All right. Va bene. Grazie, ragazzi. Ciao, ciao. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao, ragazzi. Ciao, grazie. Ciao. Ciao, ciao Dorina. Ciao, ciao. 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 Ciao, ciao. Ciao a tutti. Buon appetito. Grazie, Grazie. mille.